Alright guys, welcome back to another exciting Killer Nacho Wi-Fi battle. Um, so this time I was on a chat room that I've been kind of uh, looking around in Gen 5, trying to find, test out some new guys, and I fought a guy named Shadow Storm. And this turned out to be a pretty awesome match, and we decided to post it because it's pretty nice. Alright, so I'm going to go into my Magikarp, because he's a Magikarp, he just splashes and stuff, but he actually is going to Dragon Dance, because this is a special Super Duper Magikarp. So I am going to, um, yeah, Dragon Dance, and then I see Trick Room, so I know exactly what kind of team this is, and, um... It's really good. Trick Room teams are can be really nice, and they got quite a few new toys in this gen. And basically, the main idea of Trick Room is to make, like... Because, you know, sometimes in um, normal Pokemon battles, you, like, waste a lot of EVs on speed. But um, if you don't do that, and you just rely on Trick Room to make your stuff faster, you can actually add quite a lot of attack and bulk to every one of your Pokemon. So it does have quite a lot of potential. So I'm going to go into Fortress, because I see him using... Um, Psychic, and I don't want to uh, lose Gyarados quite yet. And so Fortress is like a Bronzong, and Bronzong is a really nice wall in this gen. So yeah, I'm just going to throw rocks at him, and that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to go Hypnosis, hoping that this Reunculus, I think, uh, Reuniclus? You, yeah, I think that might be what it's called. Um, stays asleep, because um, I'm kind of hoping this is his only Trick Rumor. But then I see Dusclops, and I'm like, oh, so Dusclops might also be a Trick Rumor. So that kind of stinks. So I'm going to go out into... Um, Date Rape, which is an awesome name for a Breloom, because that's what he does. He kind of, like, you know, puts people to sleep and then rapes them. Um, but, yeah, so I'm just going to set up a sub, because I don't really know what this Dusclop's going to do. And uh, he tries to go for the Trick Room. So, yeah, this is another Trick Rumor, and I kind of figured that's what he was going to do, but, yeah. So, now that I have a sub up, though, I'm just going to go for a Stone Edge to try to hit that um, Dusclops, because it's a Ghost type. Obviously, I can't Focus Punch it. Um, so, he goes into X Cavalier, which is a pretty darn good Trick Rumor, because of how powerful it is. Um, however, I'd still have the sub up, so I'm just going to focus punch. And yeah, he does have the Mega Horn, which is a pretty damn powerful move and will break my sub. However, um, I do get the focus punch off. And yeah, so he's dead. So, <laughs> yeah, poor ass Cavalier. I've killed like two of them without trouble, and they're actually really cool pokes. Makes me kind of sad. So he goes on to Embor, which is um, actually a pretty cool name for the third gen, or sorry, fifth gen starter. Um, this is the fully evolved fire starter in the game. So anyway, I'm going to go out into Virus, because um, I know that I thought a fire move was coming, and Virus is a pretty awesome physical wall. So he switches out here, which is very curious, because I don't know why he wouldn't go for the fighting move, so that kind of tips me off that he's um, a choice bander, because I, you know didn't see a life orb or leftovers or anything, and he didn't change his move to a fighting type move, so I'm guessing that thing is a choice bander at this point. So I go back into Magikarp because he goes into Reuniclus, and I just don't want to give this thing an opportunity to wake up, so I'm going to take this opportunity to Dragon Dance. Um, as long as he goes into that thing, I'm just going to try to D-Dance because I just, you know want to force the switch. I don't want him to uh, wake up, because one less trick rumor he has, the better. And um, the new sleep mechanics in this game makes the sleep counter actually reset every time you switch out, so I, if I play this right, I could have Reuniclis um, asleep for the rest of the battle. So I set up a Dragon Dance and taunt him, because I don't want him setting up a trick room. He actually tries to Will-O-Wisp, which is awesome. And once I see the Will-O-Wisp, and he's not going for like the T-Punch or anything, I'm kind of guessing that he doesn't have it, so that's pretty nice. However, I do know he has this annoying Porygon, too, because obviously I've seen his team before the battle. Um... So I know he's probably going to go into it, and he does, so I just go for the waterfall to get some damage, and now I have to switch because I'm afraid of the, th um, you know, para move, either uh, discharge or para, you know, thunder wave. But he actually makes a really good prediction and predicts uh, date rape, which is pretty nice. Uh, I wanted to date rape pretty much to take either the T-wave or the discharge, and um, he makes a pretty nice play and predicts ice beams, and so that's... That's a really nice play. Good job. But anyway, I get a crit with uh, Stone Edge, which kind of sucks for him, because now I can basically revenge kill Porygon 2 with anything. So I go into Royal Pain. And yeah, technically Royal Pain is the name of my Nido Queen, but I don't care, because, um, yeah. Royal Pain's a good name for a Nido King or a Nido Queen, and I already kind of gave Doom Cannon to another Pokemon. So, Royal Pain it is. Anyway, so Royal Pain is actually, like, really brokes in this gen, and I did predict the Ice Beam, because I saw the High Dare... Gary on, on his team, so that was really awesome. Um, 
that I predicted that, so we both kind of predicted an ice beam for the amazingness, and um, but that's kind of like what um, knowing the opponent's team before the battle gives you. You know, it gives you the opportunity to predict switch ins. Like, I didn't know he had Hyder Gary on, except that I saw it in the beginning of the team. But anyway, so uh, he gets a crit on my fortress after I predict the Draco Meteor, which kind of sucks. Um, so he kills it with Fire Blast. So I guess that kind of like makes up for me critting his Porygon, too. But yeah, so I go into my War Kitten and Searing Shot it because War Kitten has like this awesome ability that raises accuracy and stuff like that. But anyway, he goes out into Reunicles, and I'm just going to go right back out into Magic. Carp, um, because I just don't want to give this thing the opportunity to wake up. But anyway, I'm going to talk about Royal Pain for a second. Um, Royal Pain, or Nido King, gets an awesome ability called um, Sheer Force in this gen, which raises the power of moves that have um, secondary effects um, at the cost of not being able to use the secondary effect. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, maybe it's a bug, but it has this awesome um, synergy with Life Orb that whenever you have a Life Orb and use it, uh, with sheer force, your life orb doesn't actually activate, so it makes that freaking awesome. So anyway, this uniquely gets the first turn wake, which really sucks. Because like I said, um, the sleep counter does reset when you switch out, so he does wake up first turn, which is kind of annoying. So I'm just going to go out into my virus and uh, paralyze him, and yeah, I kind of know that that makes him actually even slower, so even better with Trick Room, but I kind of do it because I figure that's the only kind of status you can put on him right now, and um, you know, the Parahacks would be really beneficial with trying to cake this thing out because of his really annoying recovers and stuff. Because that recover is just going to be a pain in the butt, because I have nothing that can super effective this guy on my team right now. And, um, I think he can live basically two of any attack that I have, so it's going to be a real pain in the ass. So now he sets up the Trick Room again, and he goes out into Embor, and I kind of figured he'd switch, so I go for the Thunder, because I figure, you know, Thunder's going to be good against anything. Um... Except it misses. Of course it misses. I mean, it's thunder. Thunder never hits, you know, for you. It always hits for your opponent, but never for you. So anyway, I'm just going back, back in the virus, and I am going to... Yeah, he misses at Stone Edge, which kind of sucks for him, but yeah, I probably wouldn't do too much to virus anyway. He goes out into his Porygon 2, I guess as Death Fodder, because I just go for the Discharge, and that will kill the Porygon 2, so at least I get that thing out of the way, and it doesn't have an opportunity to, like, recover or something stupid. Alright, so now he goes back into Runicles, and, um... I'm just going to switch right back into War Kitten, because, you know, it's a War Kitten. So cute, little War Kitten. So I'm just going to, like, Searing Shot, because it's, like, my really my best move. Um, actually, no, because I predict the th switch again. I go Thunder again, right. And, um, yeah, so I go Thunder, and it misses again. So why would I ever think that Thunder would hit? <laughs> Come on, now. So I go into Royal Bane, predicting um, either the, you know, fighting move or the... Uh, Stone Edge, and it ends up, you know, being right about that fighting move, but it still does a ridiculous amount of damage, because Embor is, like, pretty damn powerful, and actually Nido King's quite a pussy when it comes to defenses. So I'm gonna go out into, um, yeah, back into War Kitten, because I know War Kitten's a little more bulky, and might be able to survive two hammer shots. However, I, um, am able to go first, because the dimensions are no longer weird, and I kill that Embor with Psychic. So that Choice Band Embor was probably my last real threat on this team, so that is dead, and that is good for me. So now he goes back into Reuniclus, and um, I'm just going to Searing Shot, because it's, you know, my strongest move, technically, and I do not kill it, which sucks, and he gets off the Recover. But basically, if he gets if he gets one Parahax at this point, he's fucked, but I have to worry, too, because I have a Life Orb here. So it really comes down to right here... Um, Will he get the Parahax or not, or will he stall me with life, my own Life Orb? Um, and I do hit him back to the red, and he gets Parahax, so that was really nice for me, but that could have gone really either way. So he goes to sw he's going to switch here. I'm not really sure why. Um, I'm just going for the Psychic here, because it's, you know, um, it's not going to miss. And, um... I guess he just feels like taking damage on Dusclops or something, but yeah. So I go into Royal Pain, because he's, like, really powerful, and... This move set is actually awesome. It says like flamethrower, ice beam, thunderbolt, and earth power. Just pure um special and sheer power fun. But anyway, I go for the flamethrower because I was stupid and I was thinking that thing had levitate, but it actually doesn't. It has pressure, duh, because it came in and said pressure. And I'm pretty sure that thing I don't know if it actually can have levitate, but yeah. 
Anyway, so I sweep him the rest of his team with royal pain, and that's freaking awesome, because sheer power Nido King is so pro in this gen. It has the greatest type coverage, and it's just a powerhouse, uh, because it's moved to a bunch of damage, and he doesn't have to worry about life orb for whatever reason. Anyway, so that was a great game, Shadowstorm. Um, I really like this battle because it really shows off the potential of... Um, What's it called? Trick Room in this gen. They got a lot of new, interesting options, and um, I really like Shadowstorm's team. I thought it was well built, and he played the battle really well. There was um, it was actually uh, quite a lot of hacks on both sides, uh, with me missing uh, quite a few moves. I mean, we both got crits. Um, we both got some unfortunate things like first turn wakes and para hacks, but you know that's the game, and I don't know. I some of it might have mattered. I'm not quite sure, but anyway. Um, I guess today's question of the day... Hold on, I need to think of something. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so today's question of the day is, what is your new favorite item, um, or item upgrade, in this battle? I mean, we saw the upgrade to Life Orb, kind of, when used with Sheer Force, but actually this battle contained um, another new item that is uh, present in Gen 5, and that is the Evo Light Stone, and the Evo Light Stone is when used on a pre-evolved Pokemon. It a, uh, raises defense and special defense by uh, 50%. You might have noticed that our Porygon 2s and his uh, Dust Clops did not have leftovers. You might have been kind of wondering why that was. It was because they were carrying Evo Light Stones, which makes them even more uh, bulky than they even are normally. That means Porygon 2 is a monster in Gen 5. In fact, I think Porygon 2 is hands down better than Porygon Z, even though they probably, you know, fulfill different roles in the team. But just because now Porygon 2, I mean, sure, he can't use leftovers, but now that he has 50%, you know, defense and special defense increase, he can be a mixed wall, and he still has recover to heal, so that's really, really good item, and I think the Evo Light Stone has to be my favorite new item, um, or item upgrade in Gen 5. So leave that comment, and see you guys next time. Alright, peace out, Holmes.